Indra's net is first and foremost a very beautiful image. It's used both in Hinduism and in Buddhism to talk about the interconnectedness of the micro and the macro. It's about cause and effect, it's about symbiosis, it's about interdependence. Considering it's thousands of years old, I really thought it was a very prescient metaphor for a lot of contemporary practices now. So rather than using very heavy hitting terms like emergency and climate consciousness and planetary thinking, I thought of using something gentler and more poetic that could really encapsulate the current moment but open it up for artistic dialogue and artistic inclusion. We have 19 artists in this group presentation. I'm extremely excited to bring all of these different voices to London. Indra's net is a net which has a sense of ethics and accountability at its core. There are questions related to land, to ancestry, to indigeneity, to rights, to sovereignty, to memory, to materiality, to objecthood, to even ideas of science fiction, of cybernetics, of the future. And in all of this, I really think of these artists as performing many roles. They are historians, they are archaeologists, they wear many hats. They are not contemporary artists in the traditional sense of having a studio practice, but they really live in the world at large. Martha Atenzia is a wonderful artist who lives in the Philippines in a remote island called Bantayan and has just been involved with a very beautiful festival dedicated to the fisher folk communities on the island and really celebrating their indigenous relationship to the ocean, to the land, to environmental destruction that's happening, to governance, labor. Oscar Santelan is doing a very special project called Forecast, which is using the typology of a colonial Wardian case. Within this case will be a little peephole that audiences can look into, and what you will find is a hidden garden. But the garden is supposedly kept alive through the light that's emanating from six screens, and on the screens are apocalyptic films. So Santalan is somebody who's very interested in the relationship, again, between the organic and the artificial, between nature and technology, between where we are now as a species and future possibilities of uh, future demises. Um, there are many artists, I feel, who are in their 20s and 30s who are very concerned about the survival of the human species. When we go back to the theme of Indra's net, one of the images that I am particularly interested in is the image of the Buddha as the Avilokiteshwara. And Avilokiteshwara is a Sanskrit word for the Buddha or the Bodhisattva of compassion. So this is a being that gets reincarnated in order to help man or all sentient beings when there is a moment of crisis. And in Tuan Andrew Nguyen's work, we see um, the Avilokiteshwara, but his form is fragmented because the limbs have actually been cast out of brass artillery shells found all over Vietnam as a legacy of the war. Artists have really risen to the occasion and been extremely generous with making new work, drawings, videos, installations, photographs for this section. One in particular is Shiraze Hoshiari's monumental painting, The Songs of the Earth. The public has never seen it and Shirazi is very interested in the relationship between the breath and the body and existence and consciousness. Um, so in many ways that painting provides an introduction to the entire section. I really hope that audiences, when they come to engage with this work, whether it's virtually or in person, will come away feeling very inspired. Perhaps they've come across an artist that they were unfamiliar with, a practice, an idea, a story, that they really understand that the world that we live in is multidimensional and very complex, but it's not a world without hope.